Kenzo Atsushi in Bogota, Colombia. When the word of God is lived, it becomes the legitimate defense against the devil. He cannot accuse us. The believer who does not live that word is unprotected by his spiritual covering. The word of God has supplied my spirit and given me the strength to overcome the trials. Jesus takes care of me as a newborn child. All my spiritual growth was granted by the Holy Spirit. He took all the wickedness out of my heart. He set me free from all sin that kept me from growing spiritually. He purified my soul and the Holy Spirit fertilized my interior with His Word and made the spiritual fruits germinate. This seed that has grown in my heart has borne good fruit and comes maturing every year. This explains that I am in the process of transformation. I went to the city of Bogota, Colombia and preached the Word. I campaigned in a poor neighborhood in a small church. I was worried about those brothers. The pastor said that the brothers are no longer the same. They lost their spiritual warmth. They did not preach more like before and they accepted to live in this situation of sin. Some of those church members have left in search of the fire that they have lost and went to other ministries. The defect is not in the church. It is in their attitudes. They have fallen in the faith. They are looking for churches that can ignite their flames. They will never find those flames in other churches if they do not repent of their sins. If they seek the Lord by repenting of their sins, their dry branch will turn green again and their dry leaves will fall and new ones will be born. Their branches will blossom like the flowers of Aaron's rod, proving that he was holy and able to be chosen. The dry branch has no Holy Spirit. It is thirsty for God and seeks means to quench that thirst. It has no comforter that can fill him. It is dying spiritually. If Jesus is life, it is the believer who is dying. It is a sign that he is far from the source of life that is able to quench his thirst. Many say, are you not afraid of being murdered by what you say? I said, my safety is not to trust in me, but to him who has given me life, only he who can take it. I have the conviction that he is with me and will deliver me from all evil. When I had finished speaking, a man came in with a weapon in his hand and said, prove that you are of God, you will die for him today. If you want to live deny your God. I said, Satan, listen here. This territory is not yours, you have lost. From today I declare your defeat. The boy pointed the gun and said, today you will die. I said, you can shoot. No bullet will come out of your weapon. My life belongs to God. The key to death is in the hands of Jesus, only he can kill me. When I began to speak these words, that young man fell back demonized. He was trembling, looking like he was in convulsion. I cast out the devils in him, there were legions in that body. The pastor of that church said, this boy is not the first, others came in here and closed the church, you are the first to beat head on. I prayed for that boy and he accepted Jesus. I kept talking, God has held me in my hands and has guided me and surrounded me with his wall of fire that I am safe. I am safe in him. And I will be free from danger. I am in his hands. I cannot fall. I am bound in him. I am secure in him. I cannot bow down before sin nor yield to my desires. I remain loyal to him, I am firm in his presence. He has taken me out of spiritual suffocation. He has capped my weaknesses. He has structured me in his word, restored the cracks of that time and repaired my broken columns so that this temple does not crash to the ground. Sin tried to enter this temple and destroy it. The seal of the Holy Spirit prevented sin from entering into me and sealed the doors of this temple. The other day the pastor was preaching. The boy entered with a knife in his hands to kill the pastor. The pastor was terrified. I went in the middle and said, in the name of Jesus you are paralyzed. That boy had raised his hand to stab the pastor. His body was paralyzed like a statue. I breathed and he fell. I expelled the devil. That boy was free. Another death attempt and another deliverance by God. Through Jesus, my knowledge about the world became different from that knowledge I had before. Today I see people with the look of mercy. It is no longer that look of contempt but a look of love. A look of wanting to save them. The gaze of God is in me. The world is the picture of sin, everything that happens bad in him is the consequence of sin. If the whole world were to repent and not practice more sin, there would not be so much evil and catastrophe. Let God enter your senses and let him create his projects out of nothing in your life. Understand Jesus, know Him, plunge into deep spiritual waters. Holy Spirit is alive in your body. Be valiant for God. Be a strong warrior for God. 
Be submissive 100% to His Word. Obeying God is always to be under His grace. Walking in His ways makes you a stronghold of God. Let Him use you, obey His Word, pay the price to enter heaven, be a mirror in this world, produce effects in a person's life through His life, let the power of God transform you. It will give you strength, empowerment and make a spiritual power against the bad. After the service, I went to the pastor's house. The next day an afflicted mother called the pastor and said, Come to my house. My son is crazy. At the same time, I got a vision. I saw a dark boy near the computer watching Facebook. An evil spirit came out of the page coming through the screen and going to the mind getting lodged in his head. The Lord opened my vision more. The other side of the computer had a man talking to this boy. He cursed the boy's pictures and cast spells on the other side. He's a Satanist that the boy met on the social network. I went to the house of the crazy kid. I expelled the demon I told him not to use Facebook. He said that he would no longer use it and he was converted there. I went to minister in another church and the state of that congregation was revealed. The message to that place was about the passions of the world that dominate the head. Other brothers make wrong decisions when they are nervous and have emotional upheaval. All this takes the reason, leaves them irrational, without mental balance, indomitable and explosive. Prayer will cushion their flesh and tame their emotions. They were deceived by the false prophets because they did not know the word of God. They had no understanding of the word. They were hearers and not doers. They did not let the Holy Spirit use them. They did not let him command ministering and leading. I exhorted them to prepare themselves. To examine their lives. To correct themselves. To obey the call. To do God's wills and to do what God wants. To be an instrument in the hands of God. To be useful for the work of God. It is time to plant for Christ to reap its fruits, be an agent for the work of God, God will give you celestial resources to reach souls. When the church was finished, I went away to where I was staying. When I got there I covered my knee, prayed without ceasing until 4 in the morning. I felt my body explode with anointing, electricity took over me. I fell with my face on the ground. My spirit left. The angel Gabriel came down to meet me. He said, Kenzo, are you prepared for yet another experience? I said, I am. Churches. We ascended into heaven. The heavenly gate opened and we entered into paradise, longing to return to this place. The angels of heaven received me. I did not know, but my name was popular in heaven for the works I did on earth and for the life I lived on earth. The false prophets, despite their fame on earth, their names were not mentioned in the sky. The angel said, Satan wants to destroy the church through sin. Tell them to reject the world that Satan offers. Tell them to kill the will of the flesh and their heart desires. Those who are in Christ live a holy life. No harm will reach you, or witchcraft can hurt you because holiness is your equipment. Tell the church to do charity. Help the oppressed and those who need it. The person you help today can help you tomorrow if you have gratitude. Tell them to help without expecting anything in return. Be generous and not self-seeking, retribution will come from God, on earth or if not, in heaven. Solomon. Jesus said, My servant, you have always had doubts about Solomon's salvation. Today I will reveal to you where Solomon is. I and Jesus began to walk in the golden streets in the sky. We passed near the golden buildings that are the houses of the saints. I saw young men with their bodies resplendent. I saw Isaac, Job, Samson, and Elijah. We continued to walk and I saw Mary Magdalene, Anne, and Elizabeth. They were beautiful and their faces reflected the glory. We arrived at a place where I saw King Solomon. His white robes reflected the white of justice. I also saw James and John the Baptist, everyone was happy with smiles on the face. We continued to walk the Lord said, Kenzo that is your home. When I looked I saw a large golden building. Then we entered the crown rooms. The Lord showed me my crown. I also saw my white robes, which I will dress when I go to live there. I saw my accolades that I gathered on earth through my work for Christ. Churches. Jesus told me, we are in a time where many are spiritually hungry. They do not know how to feed themselves and seek pleasures in the world and cannot supply their spiritual needs with that which is fleeting. Sin can feed the flesh, not the spirit, and nothing will advance unless the spirit in man feeds on me and my word. Others seek false religions and they feed on devils and unclean loaves. 
They drink from the filthy, polluted water springs. All this causes spiritual ill-being. Tell my church to strive in my pure and holy doctrine, without contamination with vain philosophies and false theologies. Many bishops and apostles had their minds seared by theology. They have no experience with God. They live dead in the letter, without the direction of my truth. They are only based on their different theological opinions and theological views. They seek the truth in men's theology. Not seek the truth in me. I want to dwell in them through my spirit. These men mix the truth of God with theological opinions. They offer to the people food that leave them half hungry. They do not seek to have an experience with God and are connected with the world. They are only academic scholars. They are not practitioners, they know a God in the books of theology. They do not know me as a person. They love the world and what is in it. Their relationship with the world is so strong that they no longer want to leave the world for heaven. They experience the world's delights more and do not experience the supernatural of God. The world offers only a few hours of joy, everything in it is illusion and are traps for death. They are allied with the world. They are like rats drawn by the smell of food and fall into the trap of death armed by Satan. Spirits of Seduction After I returned to earth and went to church to minister, a sister of the church asked me to pay a visit to her house to pray for her sister. I said, I will come to your home to pay a visit and pray. When I came to the house, my knee fell on the ground. The Lord spoke to me, do not go to that woman's house, Satan will use her with lies to scandalize your ministry. Remember Joseph who was scandalized by Potiphar's wife. This woman will do the same to you. The next day I did not go to her house. She came to ask me why I did not. I said that God had not allowed. When I finished ministering, that sister came to me and began to seduce me with words. I rebuked her. She fell possessed of the spirit of seduction. The Lord Jesus revealed to me that the devil is laying snares in this world. He knows the weak point of the world. He studies every person and attacks people in their weaknesses. This shows the importance of being sealed and having the word reigning in is hardening our hearts to sin. Jesus said that we have to be more spiritually active, we cannot lower our guard nor stop praying. If we falter in this final stretch, all our work and the ministries that we conclude in the long run would have been in vain. Slumbering churches. I have been walking in various churches. I have had visions of a sleeping woman dressed as a bride. Sleeping in a deep sleep, a spiritual drowsiness. Let's get out of that spiritual drowsiness that does not let you wake up to the reality of the spiritual world. That sleep does not leave you and you don't know how to differentiate right from wrong. Everything is common. Sin is normal. This sleep is taking away their consciences from what is spiritual. Their eyes are closed to sin and they do not open to looking at themselves and they do not know what they are doing. They have become sleepwalking people, walking without conscience of things, walking in crooked ways. Thinking they are in grace, wake up, wake up, you are in a spiritual war against the forces of evil, only the strong will survive and the losers will be delivered to the evil legions and be imprisoned in hell. The reward of the loser believers is prisons and condemnations. Your enemy Satan is so close to you, acting before your eyes and you do not wake up to see. He has already infiltrated and you still do not know it is he who is acting. Many have lost their identities as Christians, until when men like me alert them. I will have a few years here on earth. I am an old man. After I go to glory, hardly anyone else will stand in my place to warn you. Spiritual relaxation is coming in. This opens up openings in the spiritual world for the demons to enter. Many no longer minister as before. The anointing is not the same. Their fellowship with God is breaking up gradually. They need a spiritual renewal, a revival of the Holy Spirit. I see brethren in the hour of preaching. They do not feel the joy to speak of Jesus. They do not let the Holy Spirit dissipate sadness and bring joy. Their sad faces at the time of ministry reveal their state of emptiness. They do not leave their problems outside and they carry them into church nowadays. They cannot keep their faces happy and do not transmit joy in their ministrations. I do not understand why they are not happy and joyful when they step on their feet inside the house of prayer. You have the privilege that the people of Israel did not have. They have rejected the Messiah and you have taken them for yourselves and yet with their names written in the book of life they are not happy, letting the tests drown their faith. They do not feel motivations for anything. They seem to come to church unwillingly.
Jesus does not want this. He does not accept imperfect sacrifices. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. He will fill your hunger for happiness, joy, hope, and peace, filling your emptiness. I cover this with you. I also cover my ministry that is in the United States. I know that I have to deliver the pure and undefiled flock on the day of judgment. I do not want to be responsible for any soul that is lost and not saved and when I am sad I pray twice as long on my knees. I cry until I become comforted by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives me relief and takes away my pain. When I get up I am glad I go up on the altar laughing as a representative of the gospel. I never went up on the altar with a sad face. We have to be strong. I lost my son David, death brings the pain. Not everything we lose is a bad thing because loss represents transformation. It changes the heart in relation to life. Physical and emotional pain makes us assume a position of the warrior before of the situation and that pleases God and brings us closer to Him and makes us wake up spiritually. God tests our faith to see if we are firm in Him. Our faith in Him affirms us in Him and makes us see Christ. Do not tell your problem to anyone. Tell Him, only He can solve. On your knee, talk to God, rest and He will solve. Do not blame Him. God does not forget you, even if you look at your problem and see it too big, remember you have a God much bigger than any problem of yours. Even if your problem is long and it seems that the solution will never happen, remember Jesus is the owner of the time who determines everything. He will give you the strength to wait and your patience will be longer than that your problem. Your faith will be stronger than all your difficulties. As I knew God, it was in the greatest difficulties of my life I saw Him inside the furnace with me. I had to enter the spiritual world to know God in all His plan. The Holy Spirit invaded my being in a way that I was sensitive to His touch. My spiritual sensitivity became acute. I felt more pleasure to be in His presence. Churches. Satan appeared to me and tried to discourage me. He said that as much as I preached holiness, love, forgiveness, and repentance. As much as I kept sound doctrine, it would not succeed worldwide, for he told me that he created false sects such as Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Adventism and other charitable, kindly looking sects to defile sound doctrine. And that it was too late for me to spread the true doctrine, for he is multiplying his deceitful sects throughout the world. Satan went away and I had a vision. I saw a bride in black. A false church sitting on the throne and reigning. A voice told me, it is multiplying false churches. I will seek my true church before it is defiled and deceived by the false brides, the bride of Satan. The Holy Spirit has revealed to me divisions within the churches because of offensive jokes that irritate the neighbor and does not respect the brother who does not like jokes. We will be ripe for the things of God and become accustomed to walking in sound doctrine. I know it is difficult. They will get used to it. They will be addicted to prayers every day. They will fall into this spiritual routine. They will live a holy life. If they live a complacent life in the presence of the Lord, you are the word that preaches to them. Many live a life of sin. They no longer gain souls by scandalizing the gospel. They have fallen into disrepute because of their testimonies. False teachers, deceiving doctors are within the churches using God's own word to deceive as Satan used the word of God to deceive Jesus in the wilderness. If we are not clothed in the armor of holiness, we will be easy prey. The devil does not care for believers who seek material blessings. Materialism for the devil has no value. It is perishable. The devil cares about what is eternal. Those who seek spiritual things, who seek to dwell in heaven, things that are not perishable. All this bothers the devil. He knows what he has lost. He has thrown his inheritance away. He knows what is good and he does not want us to get what he has already lost. He will put obstacles and spiritual impediments so that you do not grow spiritually. Satan strives that we become rich and millionaires on the earth, diverting from Jesus than having a reward in heaven. He prefers that we conquer the world rather than gain heaven. Let us be powerful here to conquer heaven, for wealth corrupts and the wealth of this earth ends. Those of heaven is eternal, our riches are not in this world. It is being stored in heaven where we will go and dwell. That we may gather up treasures upon the earth. When we die we will not take anything with us. Everything will stay here, where we go we will not take. Then the groom will take us and we leave our goods behind. May all who hear this testimony come to be reconciled to God. May they receive a special anointing upon hearing those words. Amen. Kenzo Atsushi in Bogota, Colombia. 
When the word of God is lived, it becomes the legitimate defense against the devil.